Welcome, I'm Dr. Jenna Koznitsky, and today is the start of our video series on hydrocephalus research. To start us off, I thought I'd talk about some of the specific areas that I find really interesting and that maybe have changed over the last 10 or 15 years. The first comes from our clinical networks, the Hydrocephalus Clinical Research Network, or HCRN, and our Adult Hydrocephalus Clinical Research Network, or AHCRN. Now, over the years, they have collected a lot of high quality data on our patient populations and public, published really seminal work. What I'm really excited about, though, is that they're moving into conducting randomized control trials. And a randomized control trial is a very structured way of getting definitive answers about, say, one procedure over another. And so it really is the gold standard when you look at conducting clinical research. And overall, our clinical networks have really just elevated the level of clinical research that's now expected in hydrocephalus. The second area I wanted to talk about is on the basic or translational side of research. Now we know that hydrocephalus has traditionally been thought of as a plumbing problem. There's a problem with absorption of CSF or a physical blockage along the ventricles, or there's maybe an increase in CSF production in a few types of hydrocephalus. But now our researchers are really looking at why and going beyond sort of the basics of, well, there is a brain bleed or an infection and you developed hydrocephalus. We're really looking at the cellular and molecular mechanisms that are um, contributing to the development and which cell types in the brain, because there are many different types of cells, um, are involved. What this does, it really opens up the possibility of new therapeutics in hydrocephalus research and therapeutics that could make it to the clinic. And so there's so much research that's going on now that's looking at different types of drugs or other types of therapies that could really diminish um, the prevalence or the um, development of hydrocephalus. They're looking at how to repair damage that has already been done to some of these cell types. And then also they're looking at therapies to help us manage hydrocephalus once it's already been developed. And all of these things come together to create really a different sort of environment for hydrocephalus research that we haven't seen in the past. So if you have any questions or comments um, or suggestions for videos about research that you'd like me to cover, um, please comment below and then we'll get back to these in the next year. Thanks so much.